I get excited and start running rabbits. I prayed this morning before we started Sunday school, Lord, don't let me run a rabbit. And I pray that today as well. I'd like for us to stay on track. So take the Word of God with me this morning and turn to the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 5, and uh, Matthew chapter 5, and we'll begin reading in verse number 38. Matthew chapter 5, beginning in verse 38. Now, for the first time, I, I brought some of my, my daddy's stuff and had his picture laying out there. And one of our members said, uh, who's that? I said, that's my daddy. And they picked it up and looked at it and they looked at me and they looked at it and they said, I don't know, he's too good looking to be your daddy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So anyway. Fifth chapter of Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, verse 38. Let's read together, may we? You have heard that it, that it hath been said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you that ye resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if any man will sue thee at the law, and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. Give to him that asketh thee, and from him that would borrow of thee, turn not thou away. Now this is part of the Sermon on the Mount. Given early on, in Christ's ministry upon the earth. And his very young in the faith disciples heard this portion of the Sermon on the Mount as well. The Lord Jesus had many things that he wanted to instill in these young disciples. And he had many things he wanted to instill in those that heard him preach. But I believe here in this portion of Scripture there was a couple of things that the Lord really wanted to instill in these believers. I believe He wanted to instill into them the importance of forgiveness. And what I'd like to preach about this morning, I believe He wanted to instill in them the importance of perseverance. Our text, our text this morning will come from the 41st verse. You no doubt have heard many sermons on this topic. And whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. And I want to preach on the second miler today. And I want to preach about the joy that's in the second mile. And I want to preach about the rewards that are on the second mile. And I want to encourage all of us to find our place on the second mile. Our nation is what it is today because of the hand of God and the mercy and the grace of God in totality. Without God's grace, without God's mercy, without God's hand on us, we wouldn't be here today. We wouldn't even be here today had it not been for the mercy, grace, and the hand of God. But we also understand that as all nations uh, that are founded and begin to grow, those nations that declare themselves to be godly nations, Christian nations that follow the Lord and His Word, have always had to persevere in order to survive. Many things have tried to take away our faith and our perseverance and cause us to fall. But to God be the glory, today we stand. And we may be around a lot of deviants and atheists and agnostics and God-haters and naysayers. God's Word still stands. 
And God will still bless a people that will persevere in His name for the glory of God. Our Father, in Jesus' name, we thank You for the Word of God this morning and we pray, Lord, that You'd bless the reading of it and we pray that You'd bless the message today on the second miler. Lord, we pray that as the veterans today, we think about their perseverance and what they went through to serve our nation and they too had to persevere and they'll know exactly what we're preaching about. And Lord, for any child of God in this building today who has been saved for any amount of time understands about perseverance and why it's necessary and it's needful that we may continue to grow. Pray, Lord, that you would help us to preach today and stay on track and stay right on the thoughts that you gave us. Lord, we pray that for those that may be here today who are unsaved, they've never trusted Christ. We pray that you'll convict their heart today, Lord, and bring them to, the, to Calvary, that they may get their cross high and lifted up. And Lord, give their heart to Christ. We'll thank you for what you're going to do in these next moments. We ask it all in Jesus' name and for His sake. Amen. The law required that man to burden for a distance of one Roman which was a little five miles, 50 to feet. It doesn't make any difference in the scope of the message. Thought I'd just give that to you. But that Jew man had no choice. He was under a of law, whether he wanted to or not, whether it brought him joy or not. He was commanded to do so by the law. A good example of that in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number 27. And verse number 32 is Jesus' way to Calvary. The Bible says, And as they came out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. Him they compelled to bear his cross. So Simon, Cyrene, had no choice but under Roman law to get under that cross and carry that cross uh, for the Lord Jesus Christ. He was compelled to do so. Now I want you to understand something today about the first mile and the second mile. This is, this is true in every case. The first mile in anything is always of obligation. The tithe is the Lord's. That's the first mile. That's required. That is of obligation. But we have something in addition to tithes. We have offerings. And offerings are the second mile. We're just happy doing what's required and nothing more. And the fact is, is, is that that is probably how they view life in total, in everything. That probably was the way they were in school. They never went for the extra credit. Just no more than what was required. That's all I'm going to do. Don't ask me to do anything else. They may have taken that thinkology on into their life and say, I don't have to do anything extra. I will come on Sunday morning. I'll come on Sunday night. I'll come on Wednesday night. But don't expect me to come to work days. Don't expect me to come to singings. Don't expect me to come to revival. There are people that are like that. They're first milers. They do what they're obligated to do, but nothing else. I'd like to say that there may be some reasons why people never get on the second mile. First of all, I believe some people never get on the second mile because the second mile is a lonely road. There's not many on it. Amen. There's not many out there that would say, Hey, won't you help me carry this? It's a little too much for me. I really don't want to be out here. No, you don't see people like that on the second mile. Because the second mile is reserved for those who want to be out there. But unfortunately, it's a lonely road. The second mile is also an endless road. The Bible doesn't say anything about a third mile, does it? The 
doesn't say anything about going a third mile. It only says the second mile. And the second mile seems to be an, an endless mile. But the ones that are on the second mile don't care that it's an endless mile. Because they're out there and they know why they're out there and uh, they have no intention of looking back. I read of a Coast Guard crew who received a call one stormy night to go out into the ocean and to uh, rescue uh, some uh, people from a vessel that was sinking. And it was a particularly dark and stormy night and one of the crew members got very fearful and afraid and cried out to the ship's captain, we're not going to make it back. To which the captain responded, our orders aren't to come back, our orders are to go. And many a veteran followed the orders and they went and never came back. But there was no guarantee that they would. You see, the captain of that vessel understood his purpose and why he was out there. He wasn't out there to go back. He was out there to go and to rescue. It's like coming to church. How many times have you heard preachers say, Oh, they just come in to get out. Amen. And there's some that are like that. And some that will stay. I told Scott a while ago, I, I said, uh, go ahead and do your pledges and all those sort of things. I got an hour and 45 minute message. And I can't get a rise out of nobody when I say that. One of these days, I no, well, I'm not going to say that. He said, preach on. I said, I don't believe I got the strength to preach that long. But, it's an endless road, but they don't mind being out there because they know why they're there. And then I think another reason that maybe some folks don't want to get on the second mile is the second mile is always under attack. The second mile is always under attack. Well, of course you're under the attack of Satan. Uh, you know, he's the great discourager. He doesn't want you out there serving God because you want to. He wants to get you discouraged and defeated and he wants to get you out of the race. So he's all the time going to be out there trying to hinder you and put things in your way. But you know, we got to get a little bit of gird in us, a little bit of uh, grit in our soul, get some intestinal fortitude of, of Nehemiah and just look down and say, I don't have time to fool with you. I'm up here building a wall. And I'm not coming down to entertain your foolish uh, wiles and your trickery to try to get me to come down off the wall. But you know what? Satan's not the only one we get attacked by on the second mile. Uh, we, get, we get attacked by our, our, our own who refuse to get on the second mile and call us all kind of smart names and, and uh, make fun of us and pick at us and tell us that ain't going to work and why you're a fanatic, you're just a freak, you're just going too far. Oh, we have to put up with all of that. And so those people are not a discourager they seek to be a destroyer. They want to try to, to get us stop doing what we're doing. And then the Bible tells us that the second mile is always a burdensome mile. Uh, Paul said in Galatians 6, 2, bear you one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. It's a burdensome road. But let me say something to you. Though it may be lonely... <laughs> Though we may be under attack, though it may be endless, though it may be a, a long road and a burdensome road, but the second mile is where Jesus wants us today. And you can't get away from that. You, you can't deny that. You can't take it out of the Word of God. Jesus said, whosoever, he didn't say just a Roman soldier, he said, whosoever shall compel thee to go a mile, go with him twain. Persevere and go on. Because I'll tell you why that is. The second mile is the voluntary mile. The second mile leads to joy. Obligation doesn't lead to joy like volunteerism does. And once we're out on the second mile... Uh, it brings happiness to our heart because we're out there doing what we know the Lord wants us to do. And we're doing what, we, we, we know that we're doing more than is what, requ is what is required. 
That brings joy and happiness to the heart of those out on the second mile. The Bible says in Matthew 20, 28, The Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and to give His life a ransom for many. Jesus came to go the second mile. Amen. If there's ever been an epitome of the second miler, it's the Lord Jesus Christ in that He went all the way for you and for me. Matthew 16, 24 Jesus said unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross, and follow me. It gives us happiness in our heart when we're on the second mile, but it also will bring holiness in our actions because there's so many today just going through the motions and putting on a show. But those on the second mile are living holy lives. Those out on that second mile don't mind the burdens. They don't mind the attack. They don't mind the loneliness of the road. They're out there for the right motives. And so let me say secondly that the second mile not only leads to joy, but the second mile leads to rewards. And we understand that the rewards on the second mile come not by the actions of our life, but by the motive of our service. Now I want you to listen to this and hear it well because we're going to a judgment someday. Sacrifices that were made only for reward will yield no reward. But sacrifices made for the Lord will yield reward. We don't do to receive. We don't give to get. This is not let's make a deal. And this is not the price is right. This is about a people wholly sanctified by the blood of Jesus Christ living for Him because we love Him and because we want to live for Him and we want to do for Him. And out there, that kind of life is in the second mile, going on beyond what's required. Yes, doing what's required, but never looking back to that as enough or satisfactory, but always going forward. And the Lord said, that's where I want you. I want you up in the forward area. I want you on the second mile because you love me. Let me tell you something. I told you that the the second mile is a lonely road. It's a lonely road in that that's a blessing that it's a lonely road. Because let me tell you what's not on that lonely road. There's no carnality on that lonely road. There's no carnality out on the second mile. Oh, there's plenty of it back here trying to meet a requirement, trying to put on a show and say, hey, look at what I've done. Look at what I've accomplished. I told our young people in Sunday school today, I said, when you hear a man of God get in a pulpit and start preaching, and he's preaching the Word of God, the King James Bible, you need to listen to that man and hear the Word of God. I said, but if you hear a man mount a pulpit and read one verse of Scripture and then spend the next 45 minutes to an hour telling nothing about what he's done, what he's accomplished, and how great he is, you're not going to get much of anything out of that. That's first miler stuff. Second milers are out there magnifying and glorifying the Lord. There's no carnality on the second mile. Woo! Praise God, there's no complainers on the second mile. All the complainers are back there trying to meet the requirement. Amen. Complaining, grumbling, mumbling the whole time. They're going to kill me making me come to church three times a week. Lord, mercy, twice on one day. All that, they're back yonder. They ain't out on the second mile. There ain't no complainers out there on the second mile. The people on the second mile are happy. They're out there doing what they can for the Lord because they love the Lord. Hey, thirdly, ain't no jealousy out there on the second mile either. Ain't no jealousy. All the jealousies back here trying to meet the requirement, trying to outdo one another, to try to impress somebody. I've always loved that saying about materialism. It says keeping up with the Joneses means buying things that you don't need with money that you don't have to impress people you don't like. And that's what the bunch in the first mile is trying to do. Amen. Second milers out here, oh, you're not going to find no jealousy out on the second mile. There's also no greediness out there on the second mile. Amen. We're all on the same team with a common goal, trying to get people to Christ, trying to get them disciple, trying to get them ready for heaven. Amen. That's what we're here for. 
We have a beautiful building, a beautiful campus, and praise God for all of that. But we're all here for one purpose, and that's to get people ready to go see Jesus. That's what we're here for, get people ready to go see Jesus. Get them saved, amen, by the grace of God. Disciple them, teach them, and train them. Hey, there's no greediness out there in the second mile. And then there's no desire for credit out on the second mile. Uh, this is what I done. I did this, or I gave that. You know, for the eight years of President Ronald Reagan's two terms, he had the following quote on his desk on a little wooden plaque. It said, "There's no limit to what can be accomplished as long as you don't care who gets the credit." That's the second mile. Amen. Pulling together all in one place. 1 Corinthians 10, 31 says, Wherefore, where, therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. That's out on the second mile. And Isaiah chapter 35, verses 8 and 9 talk about the second mile. And a an highway shall be there, and a way, and it shall be called the way of holiness. That's the second mile. The unclean shall not pass over it, but it shall be for those, the wayfaring men, though fools shall not err therein. No lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast shall go up thereon. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. The second mile. The second mile. I have much more to say that I don't have time to say. So maybe we'll say it another time. But I want to just simply say that On this day of Veterans Day, I got to thinking about this verse of Scripture. And I'm reminded that our forefathers, some of them were called minute men. Some of them were regular army. Some of them were militia, just farmers. The British thought that militia was nothing but farmers with pitchforks. They found out otherwise pretty quick. Those militias uh, were some of the first that engaged in guerrilla warfare, ambushing the enemy. But most all of our forefathers were called patriots. And if you went out into a crowd of young people today, not, not a crowd of young people in a church, but just the young people out in the community. He said, what's a patriot? And they'd probably tell you a member of the NFL team in New England. That's all they know. In the Webster's 2018 edition, Dictionary, A patriot is defined as one who loves and supports his or her country. And that's it. That's all it says. So I went back to Webster's 1828. And in Webster's 1828, he gave scripture with his definition. And the definition of a patriot in this country in the year 1828 was a little more involved than just saying one who loves and supports his or her country. It said that a patriot was a person who loves his country and zealously supports it and defends it and its interests. And it is one who is devoted to the welfare of one's country. Today in America, for one reason or another, there are more that are living on the welfare of the country than there is devoted to the welfare of one's country. As a born-again child of God, we're patriots of this country, this country called heaven where we're heavenly citizens and we are ambassadors for Christ. I want to stop right there. And I think if the Lord be pleased and if the Lord gives me the green light, I'll preach the rest of this tonight.
Let's bow our heads in prayer. Let's have our song leader and our musician come. And let's have a number of invitation this morning. Jesus said, don't be happy. Don't be satisfied with that first mile. The Christian life is far more than just doing what is required. Yes, there are obligations we have as a born-again child of God. And we do those obligations gladly. But where the real joy that you're seeking as a Christian, the real happiness that you're desiring as a child of God, it lies out on the second mile. The above and the beyond place. And so this morning we invite one and all to the altar today with the need of your heart. If you're unsaved and you need to be born again, why don't you step out and come? If there's a need in your heart, whatsoever it may be, you come as we sing. Father, thank you for the scriptures today. And we pray that you'd bless this time of invitation in Jesus' name.